Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, gentlemen. The time has come for a project update overview. If you've been following my videos, you'll be aware that I've just finished building the new exhaust system, and I'm now back onto engine-related things. So I'll start you on a bit of a rundown of all the little bits and pieces that I've done, which I didn't feel the need to make a video on because they were just sort of small things. Okay, so where do I start? Well, heat management has been a big area that I've been addressing whilst I've been doing other things. You'll notice that quite a lot of ceramic coating's been done here. The turbo manifold heat shields and the turbos have all been ceramic coated. The turbo manifolds have been heat wrapped. The dump pipes have been heat wrapped. The wastegate pipes have been heat wrapped. So there's been a lot of heat management related stuff going on. All the heat sleeving's been done. You can see this is the power wire from the alternator. It goes back to the battery. It's got sleeving. We'll just go around the back here. You can see the sleeving's been done on the main wiring loom here. It actually has um, a few layers of different things. The main wrap that it has is this uh, large silicon and, and quite heavy fiberglass heat wrap. And it's quite stretchy. You can sort of pull it pull around really tight. And uh, then it has Velcro on the back of it. So you can sort of, you know, Velcro it up. So it, it's quite good. You can stretch it right around stuff and then do the Velcro up on the back side of it. And it's, uh, it, it's quite a good product. Um, mainly because the fiberglass layer on the inside is very, very thick. So it, uh, it gives a really, really good... Uh, protective layer. Once it's been sort of velcroed in a position it's then secured with stainless cable ties because uh, you know the velcro isn't really going to hold up with the heat and obviously the velcro side has been turned away from the heat. You'll notice there's another layer down in this area here of uh, foil backed fiberglass as well, uh, fiberglass sleeving uh, that's once again held on with stainless steel cable ties. All of the uh, the wiring behind the wastegate here that goes to the crank angle sensor and um, back into our main loom here it's all had the same sleeving applied to it and i've also modified the cover for the uh, crank angle sensor down there i've actually increased the size of the cover i'll just drop the camera off for a second and i don't know if you'll be able to see in there but uh, you can sort of see it's in here folks this there's a cover here that just goes normally just goes around uh, the crank angle sensor and connector i've actually uh, made a cover for the top of it and tigged it all together so it's still open on the back side so it it won't sort of hold heat but it gives a much more sort of radiant protection to the electrical connector and uh, the crank angle sensor itself so that should be pretty good i'll just sort of whip around the back here same deal on this side you can see everything's been heat wrapped um, and it's all looking pretty good everything is once again ceramic coated heat shield ceramic coated the turbos are all ceramic coated all of the uh, oil and water lines are in and permanent this is all permanent by the way I'll just go back around here it's a little bit lighter Everything fitted on the motor now is now permanently in position. The turbo manifolds and turbos aren't coming off again. Uh, as I said, everything is fully connected. All the uh, oil and water lines are connected. Bar this one point here, which is uh, the only reason that one's off is it's a pain in the bum when I'm lifting everything up and down. It just sort of gets in the way a bit, so I've left it off, and it's a really easy one to hook back up. Other than that, uh, that's all sort of good. Going up to the top, the inlet manifold plenum on the top's been off. The throttle bodies have been taken off and cleaned. And also the injectors have been done. So it now has 850cc Bosch EV14s, I think they are. Installation was a little bit iffy on those. I bought a kit which had uh, wiring harness connectors because they have a different plug. That was okay, but the injectors, the overall length was the same, but the lengths of engagement into the fuel rail and the manifold were slightly off compared to the overall length, so I had to machine up some small spaces to make the injectors fit better so they had no chance of pushing in or out. I was a little bit concerned that uh, they may move under fuel pressure and create a fuel leak which is the absolute last thing that you want 
uh, with your engine. So that's done. Um, I'll just go around the back again. You can see all the wastegate uh, vacuum hoses are all plumbed and everything. Uh, that's all sort of good. I've made a couple of modifications here. I've had this water crossover pipe um, off as well. That's actually only temporarily on there at the moment. Um, but what I've done, I'm not sure if you can see down in there, but that's a uh, aftermarket temperature sensor sender there. This sender I had previously mounted in one of the redundant coolant lines from the original factory oil cooler warmer setup that went to the oil filter mount. I'd had all that disconnected and I was actually using one of the connection points to house this uh, temperature sender unit in. I've actually completely deleted all that stuff now because I've, you know, obviously had all this apart and had much better access to it. So I've gotten rid of any of that sort of redundant stuff that was changed. And while I've been doing this, I've also removed all the coolant lines to the throttle bodies. So all the, uh, the heating lines to the throttle bodies, which, you know, I'll, I'll never need. I live in a very moderate climate. It never freezes here. Um, so the throttle bodies really uh, don't need those coolant lines and one of the points they run back to is here so uh, what I've done is taken this crossover pipe off the car and heated it up with the oxy just in this area here and then that allows you to remove the um, the spigot just with a pair of pliers you can heat this up and then just kind of start turning it and take it out and it's almost the right size to drill and tap for a 1 8 NPT I just had to enlarge the hole ever so slightly and then tap it out at 1 8 NPT and put the temperature sensor uh, in there I'll make up a pigtail that just runs up to the top of the engine that I can sort of plug it into uh, because it was in a completely different area and was uh, the accessibility was completely different Done a bit of work on vacuum lines See up here the back of the throttle body here. There is a, um, a Vacuum line that comes off the back of each just behind the back of each throttle body on the engine There's another one on that side. This is the vacuum source for the evap system for the fuel tank so I've got a T-piece in either side of that, and this is where I'm supplying vacuum for the blow-off valves. Uh, it's a really handy spot to go down each side. Uh, speaking of which, I've also drilled and tapped the manifold in this position just here, directly underneath where we have the brake booster connection. The manifold has quite a sort of thick uh, section of plastic directly underneath that, which is perfect to, uh, to tap it out and put in another uh, another vacuum point. I was I went right over the upper manifold and it was the thickest piece that I could find that was in a convenient location. So yeah, and I only really need that one point there and from there I will, um, I'll tee off into a couple of other areas. But as I say, a lot of it's kind of picked up from, from other things. Uh, all the hoses for the wastegates here actually gets its vacuum source from in front of the throttle body so it'll be on one of the charge pipes um, from the turbo for the turbos and then the other one just goes off into the boost controller and, and sort of comes back so they're independent of this connection here uh, this connection here will be going up uh, into sort of a, a, a vacuum block which will go to the boost gauge boost controller and you know whatever else I've got up there that needs a vacuum source um, so that's all that's all pretty good. What else have we got here? I think that's pretty much everything that's been done on the engine at this stage I've also done quite a bit of work on the body up there folks. I'll just go around here and point So I've I've made a heat shield for the fuel lines here, so uh, normally there's one fuel line which comes from the tank and there's also the vacuum line that runs back to the fuel tank evap system but we've got three lines here the extra one is the fuel return line now they've all been heat sleeved and i've also built this heat shield that runs over it where it's sort of close to the turbo and if you look up the top there you'll see that uh, everything is heat sleeved and uh, screwed back to the firewall with stainless p-clips just to make that uh, set up up there super super durable and uh, you know give it as much protection as possible from uh, the heat from the turbo manifolds and the turbos 
So as you can see, folks, heat management has been uh, the order of the day. Whilst I've been doing other things, mainly building the exhaust system, I've also had this stuff on the go. Uh, stuff's been out getting ceramic coated. Obviously, these things all sort of take time. So, you know, I'm, I've just been trying to do what I can when I can, hence doing all the exhaust system stuff while it would appear that this was all sort of unfinished. Um... But as you can see, it wasn't. It's all been still moving forward. It's all looking pretty good. I don't know if I've showed you this before. I also made up a bit of a block here to um, get these water lines back out for this section here that was removed because it just sort of didn't work before. Uh, this is your heat hose connection on this side, which also is the feed or return to the turbo water cooling. And God, I can't even remember what the other one's for. But it's all good. So the next thing that I've got on is I'm about to pull the transmission. The reason the transmission's coming off is I'm going to be fitting a Fast Intentions billet flywheel. And that's all going to be part of um, some other stuff that I'm doing. So transmission's coming off. Uh, new flywheel's going on with all ARP hardware. And I'll just head around to the front. And while the transmission's off... I'm also doing some maintenance work on the motor. I am pulling all the front off. I've already, as you can see, I've got a lot of the uh, idler pulleys and the belt and all that sort of stuff. And various parts of the ancillaries have come off. I'll be taking off the air compressor, power steering, alternator, pulling the harmonic balancer off the, f off the crank. I have an ATI super damper to go on the crankshaft there. As I say, the whole front's gonna be pulled off the engine here and that's just to do maintenance. I'm going to be doing the oil gallery gaskets. I don't actually have a problem with the oil gallery gaskets on this engine, but this is one of the older versions being a 2008. It doesn't have the later uh, upgraded oil gallery gasket gaskets. And also uh, I'll be doing the oil gallery gasket hardware as well, because apparently um, they're held on with Phillips head screws and it's impossible to torque them. And one of the reasons I've read that the oil gallery gaskets fail is the fasteners backing out. So I now have um, Allen head drive countersunk uh, fasteners. And uh, I'll also be replacing the water pump, thermostat housing, uh, all the gaskets, seals, uh, absolutely everything that comes off will be placed with all new gaskets and everything. You can see there's an area here where it's, uh, it's been weeping. I don't know what's been weeping there. It's obviously one of the gaskets in this area. Uh, all that will be corrected. That was something that sort of pushed me a little bit to, to actually do all this. It's like, well, there's a weeping gasket there. I've got to pull that apart anyway. So, um, you know, I've been aware of the oil gallery gasket issue with these engines from day one. And I figure there's no better time to do it than now while the engine's out. It's certainly uh, never going to get any easier than this to strip it all off and sort of do it. When I do the oil gallery gaskets, I'll make a separate video and I will also include all of the part numbers to get all of the components from this and to do it. I'm using all genuine parts and uh, it's really not that expensive in parts. I'm actually even replacing the uh, the crank pulley bolt because it is a uh, like a stretch to yield bolt which they really can't be reused. And I think all up, I've probably only got about 300 bucks in in parts from Nissan um, to do everything. That's including new water pump, thermostat housing, oil gallery gasket, bits and pieces, seals, bloody, you know, the, the whole sort of shebang. So as I say, when I do that, I'll make a separate video. I'll put up all the part numbers and do my best to try and give you guys a really detailed explanation of how to carry out the process yourself, including all the torque settings and, and everything like that. So that's where I am heading at the moment with this sort of stuff. Uh, I'll just spin you around to the bench and I'll just show you the big pile of stuff we've got up there ready to go. So this is all the stuff that's ready to go on. You can see we've got our, our uh, ATI super damper. We've got our fast intentions uh, billet flex plate. All the ARP hardware to um, mount the flywheel and the torque converter. All the various... Uh, gaskets and seals and everything to do the uh, the gallery gasket thermostat housing water pump that's our new uh, crank pulley bolt so it's all there folks 
I'm sure it's something that you guys will all find interesting, even if you don't need to do this now. It'll certainly be, um, you know, a usable bit of reference material for when the time comes when you guys uh, will need to do this, because I, I know it is quite a common problem, the oil gallery gasket. So that's where I'm at with it, folks. But as I say, the first thing I've got to do is get the transmission off so I can fit the new flywheel. So that's it folks, just a quick update, um, just to make you all aware of what's going on with it at this stage. As I say, all the uh, all the turbo stuff, heat shields, manifolds and all that sort of stuff, uh, that's all looking really good now. As I say, that's all sort of permanently, permanently in position. Uh, it's just a matter of getting all this kind of stuff sorted out and um, realistically once all this uh, side of it is done, I should be getting pretty close to putting the body back down onto the cross member and have the engine installed permanently and starting to hook everything up again. Uh, once that's done, it'll just be a matter of uh, doing a bit of work in the engine bay, doing the charge pipes into the throttle bodies and, uh, you know, reinstalling the intercooler and stuff. I've had the, inter the intercooler has been off and, and been sort of blacked out. There's, there's all sorts of stuff being going on anyway, folks, but we're getting there. Progress isn't stopping. We're pushing forward. I hope you guys are finding it interesting coming along for the journey. So as always, folks, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. I know this was only a quick one, but nonetheless an important one. So remember, guys, if you like my videos, remember to give them a like, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so you get notifications, leave a comment because it really helps me out with the rankings in YouTube if you guys uh, leave comments and all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.